Can we do my show and tell? I'm not proud of this baby. <laughs> I can see. <laughs> sure, go ahead. Well, this is one that I bought at Lowe's. It was in one of those little tiny containers. Uh huh. You know, and I've had it for two, maybe three years now. And I was just like, I used to always say I could grow them, but I couldn't get them to bloom. And the guy that came from Clown Alley told me they might just be too young. They had to get to a certain age. Right. So this one started blooming, and it start. I found it like the day after we had our meeting because I have them outside, and I saw that it was opening, and it's still going strong. It just has one bloom, and it smells so good. It, it especially in the morning, it smells really good. I mean, it just fills up my kitchen. Sure. But this was like a dollar and a half one from Lowe's. <laughs> you know, it took me three years, but it got here. And it's still going good. Well, you know what? It really started doing that right before it bloomed. But it already had, what do you call it, when they come in sheep, I think? Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm leaving them alone until after it blooms. <laughs> yeah, see, that's good. Once you get that new sheath on there, it's going to start growing. And when your bloom is gone, I will. Okay. Probably we're going to fight in. Well, see, but it's got a, it's not like a baby coming on. Well, over that's here. another. So I'll get it. Yeah. They call, that's called a pseudobulb. Yeah. What are you doing now? I don't think that I would divide that plant. Oh, okay. Because the more pseudobulbs you have, the better chance it's got of coming back and blooming next year. Oh, okay. I didn't know that, but this, yeah. this was one of those little tiny catlayas when yeah, I got it. When, when the stores get them, sometimes they're just maybe and three or four or five years before they're going to bloom. Yeah, and that guy from my Clown Alley is the one that told me, I said, it keeps growing, but it doesn't bloom. It may not be old enough, because I've asked everybody about lights and fertilizer and everything. <coughs> Mariana's trying to get uh, this stuff started. I'm Shri Hilmi, I'm Mariana's husband. And I'm usually the silent partner here. I usually sit in a corner by myself, minding my own business, because I know nothing about orchids. I don't. So I know a little bit of photography, and I was told that the person that was supposed to give this talk to you about photography and orchids, unfortunately, expired. And so that's what I was told. And since I haven't, they called me to give this talk. Yeah, this is a trade Okay. So basically, when you talk about photography, there are <coughs> basic principles, and it's really difficult to, to try and encompass all the cameras in one. Because some people use a, a very sophisticated camera, some people use an iPhone, some people use any other type of phone, but the principles are the same. And you can actually make pretty good pictures with very rudimentary cameras, if you have the, the concept right. So there's a number of things that I wanted to talk to you about. To start with, let's just look at the human eye. Okay, the human eye is made up of a, a lens area and a retina. So if you have an object here, if there's no light on the object, you're not going to see it. So what you're seeing is really the reflection of this light that is going and reflected on the back of your retina, and you're able to convert it into an upright in the brain because that's what you're mind tells you. That's what you're used to. That's what you grew up with. So the number of images or pixels of light that you will see depends on how big your lens is Thank you, sir. and how long it's going to stay open. So if you have a big, big lens, you're going to get a lot of light. Or if you open it for a long period of time, you're going to get a lot of light. So if you think of a cat at night, pupils are really big, but it's trying to let more light in. And during the day, you see that little slit, there's too much light. Correct? And by the same token, a camera does something very similar. It's not as good or as fancy as, as our eye, but it does something very similar. So a couple of concepts you have to understand. One is called the f-stop. F-stop. What is f-stop? F-stop is how big the lens gets or how small it gets, like a cat's eye. The bigger the f-stop, the more light you get in. Okay? 
and usually the number is smaller. So an f-stop of 1.2 is much larger than an f-stop of let's say 16. Okay? So we're clear on that? If you have an f-stop that's very large, you let in a lot of light. But you have something called a depth of field. So if you have an f-stop that's very large, you're actually going to see a very narrow area. So if you're looking from here, you're going to see a very narrow area. So if I put an f-stop at 1, which is really unusual, and I took a picture of the tip of my nose, my eyes will be out of focus. Mm. OK? Uh, and <coughs> I will show you that. If I took an f-stop at 16, you're actually going to see everything. So f stop at 16, you'll see all this in front of you. Okay? So the smaller the f stop, the more distance you see. So when you're doing land photography or scenery or something like that, you want the whole field in, right? Like, anybody heard of Ansel Adams? Mm -hmm. So Ansel Adams had a pinhole camera. It's an F22 fixed. That's all he had, and a wooden box. And he made the best pictures in the world. He still has the best pictures in the world. With all the sophisticated cameras that we have now, we can beat Ansel Adams. Okay? He had a little wooden box. So if you have a big lens, you need very little time. Right? Because if you have a big lens and a lot of time, you're going to get too much light. So when you go out in the, in the bright light from a dark room, your pupils are open, and all of a sudden you see you doing this, right? You try to decrease the light coming in. So if you have a big lens, you have to have a very fast shutter speed. So the first thing you have to learn about is f-stop. The next thing is shutter speed. So what is the shutter speed? That's how long the lens is open. So now we have the size of the lens, we have how long we're exposing it to light. If you have a bigger lens, you want a smaller time. Otherwise, you're going to burn it, right? If you have a, a very tiny lens, for the same amount of light, you might need more time, OK? So far, so good. If you take a picture of someone who's moving, OK? If you have a slow shutter speed, you're going to see this fuzzy thingy going across the screen. If you have a very fast shutter speed, you're going to see a frozen image. So when you see sports photography, they have these huge lenses, very fast shutter speed. Click, 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 and they freeze people in, in mid-motion. Okay? So when you look at the concept of the shutter speed and the f-stop and coordinate those two together, you can actually control your image. One concept that I see a lot, people always, always want to put the main object in the center of the picture. And that's OK sometimes. But it's not always so nice. Because symmetrically, your eye doesn't necessarily want to see things that are very symmetric, believe it or not. So there's something called the rule of thirds. So if you have a frame, if you put something here or here a third of the way, it actually is more aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Most photography professionals will tell you if you take a picture slightly off center, just a little bit off center, it doesn't necessarily have to be all the way up, it has a very pleasing effect to the eye. So even if you have a, an iPhone, you have to be able to use it. Don't always put things in the center. Okay? And now most of the phones now that we have that have camera photography you know, built in, they actually have a little box in the middle. If you put it on something, it focuses on that. And you can move your camera a little bit. It's still focusing on that and you get the picture. Okay? Now, talk a little bit about it. Lighting. Most of the time when people take a picture, 
They want it bright. And sometimes that's nice. But you also want to know what is going to be bright. So if you're taking a picture of me with, let's say, all this behind me, you might want to have a, a beam of light on me. But the rest of the, of, the light, of the background should be a little darker. Because you don't want to see all this clutter. But if you wanted to see me giving a talk about orchids, you can have a lot of light and show everything with a small f-stop, a 16 or a 20. OK? So far, so good? So this is a picture of an orchid. We don't have a pointer here, do we? No. Why is this not a good picture? Hmm? So I have, a, I have, a, I have a, a light behind coming back from a granite wall because of the flash, right? And also, this is not in focus. Why? Because it saw some, so much stuff, it couldn't focus on one particular thing, OK? So when you're taking a picture, always watch. If your flash is on, make sure there's no glass or mirror behind the subject. And if there is, just step a little to the side because that reflection is going to come out there, not on your picture, OK? So angulating things a little bit makes a big difference. Why is this not a good picture? There is so much crap in the background. There's some books here. There's a vent, there's shelves, there's a chair, a half a chair. So you see yeah, the picture is not in focus. People don't know why um, you know, the picture, what is telling us. When you take a picture, you want it to tell us something. So this is, this is not a bad picture, is it? But it's not a good picture either. No. Right? It's an OK picture. Why? Because, again, this is a little bit out of focus. A lot of background stuff. The lighting is more here than here. Correct? And you don't have to do fancy stuff. Why is this a bad picture? Because it's out of focus. Right? <coughs> it's out of focus. But when you focus it, it looks a bit better. OK? So in this first picture here, the box in the camera was looking at something else. When we did this, it was looking at that particular thing. Are those two the same orchid? Same, same plant. Same plant. How about it was a different color? Because of the lighting. Because of lighting. Lighting. So this is more bright, it has more light on it than that. See that? Yeah. So again here, you have some pictures of, of orchids, but again, it's in the center of the picture. A lot of background noise that distracts the eye, distracts you from looking at what you really want to see. And we'll show you examples of how we can get around that. Again, there's a chair, there's a bunch of whatever crap behind, and it looks bad, and the light is too much on the lens. Am I in your way, by the way? Can you see? So I'm so big. I think they're good pictures because of the orchids. No, they're not good pictures. They're not good pictures. They're not good pictures. Not good pictures. So now we look at the pictures a little bit better, a little bit better than the other pictures. Is this thing out of focus? I think it is. Yeah. No, no. A little bit. I guess. So again, it's it's a good picture, but it's in the center, and there's still a lot of stuff in the background. Look at the metal beams and the whatever pipes and hoses and whatever. The same picture can be taken and look better like that. So what did we do here? The main emphasis is not in the center. It's actually, it looks a lot more focused here than there. So let me pull this back a little bit. Yeah, better. better. You getting better? Mm -hmm. Am I going to, why don't you sit there, Ashna, so I don't kill you <laughs> with this big machine. Is it better? OK, so now the rule of thirds. This is the main object in our camera, right? Mm -hmm. There's something here in the background but you're not looking at it. Your eye is looking at this, right? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't look bad, even though it's not in the center of the, of the image, okay? Sometimes you don't have to have the rule of thirds, okay? Mm -hmm. This is a bit of a rule of thirds, but again, background noise. There's something called perspective in photography. If you go and take a picture of, um, let's say, the Grand Canyon, if there's nobody in the picture, you don't know how big or small it is. But if you have a tiny person standing at the bottom of the Grand Canyon that you can see, you say, holy God, this is an amazingly huge place. 
So that's called perspective. That's why sometimes you put a hand in it, or a thumb in it, or a phone or something. And that's if you want to show a size. Okay? A very nice picture that is centered. It's not bad to center it, but once in a while, having an off-center is also nice. Something called grouping. When we group pictures together. So if you want to look at pictures, for example, of um, plants, sometimes it's not only one plant. A lot of the time people look at a picture and they want to look at that particular plant and they take a picture. Well, sometimes it's nice to take a picture of a couple of plants with the one that you like being more prominently displayed, like this one here, for example. Okay? Another is just another example of, and I'm going to go through some pictures with you to show you what what the the uh, main differences are in, in technique. So this is a picture of a very nice plant in in my in Hilmi Cellars. This is the big bar, and you can see it's lost in the, in the process. It's lost. Taking this picture slightly differently would have made it look a lot better. I took it by the way, so it's not. Not bad, it's bad. So now what did we do here? Here we have a big f-stop. Big f-stop. This is on a, on a camera that I can control the f-stop that I talked to you about. So what did that do? It gave me this much in focus. Mm -hmm. So anything here is out of focus, and anything here is out of focus. Mm -hmm. So when that happens, things pop out of the screen. Mm -hmm. You see something popping out of the screen. So when you take a portrait of a person, if you use a big f-stop, you see that person, and things behind the person become fuzzy. So they stand out. They pop out on the screen, as opposed to if you're taking landscape photography. <laughs> see that again? So the example here shows us that this is very prominently displayed. Now there's a bunch of stuff behind, like in other pictures. But you can't see it, because it's hazy on purpose. Mm -hmm. So we made it hazy on purpose, OK? Grouping again, an example of grouping, two pictures together. So what do we see here? The rule of thirds. This is the object. Your eye automatically is drawn to that. Even though there's a bunch of other junk in here. First of all, it's a little bit out of focus on purpose. And number two is this is the main object, right? By the way, if you guys have any questions, you want to stop me. This is an interactive process. Faint, hazy. It actually looks better when I change that. <laughs> nice picture. <laughs> so now here, you sometimes you try to tell a story with a picture. This looks like an alien, right? Yeah. Two eyes, and and so you don't have to have the whole orchid in the picture. Sometimes a portion is okay. Sometimes you see in, in, in magazines that are advertising, for example, lipstick or whatever. You see a portion of the face. Or you, you don't see the whole thing necessarily, but your mind makes up the rest. And that's a part of the imagination of, of the photographers. Again, just a little bit of, of a, a portion of a picture. Is there a brightness on this uh, that you can see here? I don't know what that is. It looks brighter here. So you can see here also that there's portions of it that are out of focus. See that? But this is more in focus. Okay? That's again a small F stop. So you like that? Mm -hmm. That's an orchid, right? Mm -hmm. What do I know? It's beautiful. Hmm? Most of these are here. This one is not. I don't know. You tell me. You tell me. Yeah. That's why was the other one. This is your Sony. Oh. Okay. This is your orchid. I took that. It's probably not alive anymore. But it's not alive anymore. So again, you're telling a story with an orchid. You're telling people, look at this guy. He looks like an alien, or he looks like a bug, or and well, not the whole orchid is in the picture. A portion of it stands out, grouping and cropping, cropping and grouping. So. Take a picture that just shows that. It actually looks very nice with a big white, you know, frame around it, or a big black frame around it. Correct? 
But do you do that when you compose the picture, or do you do it afterwards with Photoshop? Most cameras will not have that capability. So you do that afterwards. You can crop it if you want to, to, to give it a more, more uh, aesthetically appealing uh, Ooh, appearance. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this is a